Painting water with watercolor sounds like a very natural thing, but it can be such a headache, and that's frustrating because we all have this romantic thought that it being the natural medium to paint water. So today, let's take a look at how to paint believable water with watercolor. Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. First of all, let's talk about why water is tricky to paint, especially with watercolor. Compared to other things in nature, water is more abstract, and when you try to paint more abstract shape with an elusive medium like watercolor, your mind is going to work twice as hard to make sense of all these. So, if you don't know how to analyze what you see into a readable visual language, you will end up trying to blindly copy what you see. Sort of an oxymoron. Anyways, let's go over a few key points before we start painting. Number one, water is a surface. This is something that people tend to forget. Yes, water flows around and change shapes, but it is still a surface. It receives light and shadow just like any other surface. So it obeys the laws of physics and perspective just the same. The color will change depending on the light it's under. So my suggestion is to look at it as a solid surface first. Then we look at the material properties and the deformation. Of it. Number two, what type of water are you painting? Is it a calm lake with almost no disturbance, a running river, or a raging sea? It is important to know the type of water you are painting because that's going to affect the shape and the reflection greatly. And what's the scale and the distance of it? A body of water in the far distance can look very different from a pond that is right in front of you. Number three. Make your own decision for your painting. After you analyze what you see, you can start looking at the tools that you have. What can you use to interpret what you see? Do you want to paint a sharp reflection or a soft, blurry reflection? Also, think of how it will fit in your whole picture. Will it help the composition or not? Don't forget, the most important thing is still the major shape of your painting. So don't get caught up by the reference you are looking at. Make your own decision for your painting. Okay, let's look at a few photos and analyze what we see, and then we will do simple demos of different type of waters. And as a bonus, I will share with you the process of this painting so you can see how water works as a visual element in the complete picture. Before we continue, if you like my video and find it helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. Remember to hit the bell icon so you won't miss my next video. Your support really helps this channel going and motivates me to create more content. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at different photos of waters and let's try to analyze them a little bit and see the difference between each of them and how will we interpret those. So it's important to understand what they are first in terms of their physical properties so that when we paint, we can actually find a good way to interpret them. You need to understand them first. So in this photo, we see this reflection is very, very clean, very beautiful reflection exactly mirroring the environment there up there. As down here, you can see it's a little bit darker because water, again, is a surface. So it still received the light and receiving shadow as well. So in this case, it's not receiving as much light as the environment itself. So it's a little bit darker. And down here, we see all this reflection that are very, very clean. This water is very steel. So when we see those reflection, that looks almost like a mirror, except it's a little bit darker. But if we start to see places like these, places like here and here, you start to see ripples. And that's when the reflection is starting to break apart like these. Okay, So that's when you start to see reflection have a little breakage here. Okay, And even more so back here. So that's why you're starting to see those. So this is just a very simple example of how the water reflection work. Now let's look at different type of water here. Okay, this is taken near where I work. So this river here, so there's a lot of ripples here, you see? So that's why you see a lot of this distortion and displacement on the water surface. 
So one thing I want you to pay attention is how the ripples and the reflection changes. The look changes from somewhere that's really far away to somewhere that's very, very close. So if you look at the reflection here, they are soft and blurry. They almost looks like those wet on wet work when you're doing watercolor. But over here, you see some sharp reflections with bigger ripples and stuff. And they are the same water. Well, the thing is the perspective and the distance. So they still have tiny little bit of ripples. It's just really far away. So they start to kind of blend into each other. If you look over here, and I zoom in a little bit, you can still see ripples here. Okay? But as you move down and move towards the viewer, the ripples start to become bigger. So this is sharp reflection here, but when it gets to the back, it becomes kind of like a soft reflection just because the amount of the ripples that compress together because of the perspective. So when we look at a photo like these, you still see some ripples and stuff here, but overall, because it's more into the distance, especially here, you see those soft reflections with a little bit of disturbance here, but you can see all this, these are all very, very soft. And, but when it comes to the foreground here, you start to see some sharp reflections here. Okay. So it's important to identify the differences. And one thing very important is that a reflection should line up with whatever is up there. So whether it's soft or sharp reflection, it should always align with whatever is up there. So here, another example of soft reflections. You can, if you can see this as an overall picture, this is a very beautiful picture, by the way. You see this soft reflection that looks really, really nice. Again, if I will paint this, I will use wet onto wet technique. And if you look at this water, it looks almost just like perfectly blue and clean water. But if you zoom in a little bit, you see a lot of noise. And also here, see, you do see tiny little ripples here all over the place. See, these are all ripples, but because they are so far, when you see it as a whole picture, they become this soft shape, this diffused shape. So again, so it depends on the distance and the scale of the water It's going to look different. Now where the boat pass through, you start to see it creates the ripples. So that's why you are starting to get those. Okay, lastly, the ocean. This is taken from San Diego years ago, a very long time ago. Now, the ocean looks different. First of all, ocean has more foam. So that's why you see a lot of foam, especially near the beaches. And the ocean is mostly a little bit more blue because it's deeper, it's absorbed more colors. And I'm not going to the science of the water. I'm not really good at those anyways. But just looking at the photos, you can see, you can tell the difference between the ocean and all these other rivers and lake and so on. One thing you want to notice is that there's some foams at the ocean and they still got ripples and wave and stuff, but there's not a lot of reflection. You can see a little bit here. You can see a little bit of reflection here and there, but they are usually not as obvious and as mirror-like as a lake or a river. Another thing is the different colors here. So the reason you're seeing more turquoise and a little bit more brown here because it's shallow water, there's a little bit more transparent. And you see it this being a little bit darker, there's some rock underneath. So over here as well, if you look at if you look at this, it's a little bit darker than the other part of the ocean got some rock underneath and when it goes up here it's just a lot of more blue it's just almost completely blue because it's more it's deeper and you don't really see the stuff underneath and one thing that you also want to notice is that whenever you paint a ocean scene like a beach scene make sure see how straight that horizon line is there's a little bit tilt that's because of the camera not the ocean. So look how straight that is. So this is basically the horizon line. 
So that's also something that you want to notice, the stray horizon line. So let's take a look at how we will interpret different type of water and watercolor. So generally for me, there's three different type of waters in the scenery. The water that has sharp reflection and the water has soft reflection. And then there is ocean, which is looks very different than most of the other waters. So I'm going to try to demo all three of them here. So I'm just going to keep things very simple right now. So let's say I have a couple trees here and then there's that body of water here. I'm not going to paint anything else, right? So water here, some tree here. Okay, so I'm just going to paint it very loosely just to give you an example. So we also need to think about the order that we want to paint this. So if we look at the reference, the sky is the lightest part. Uh, the sky actually, the sky in this photo actually is almost so light that it is almost white. So we'll still give it a little bit of blue here. Okay, so let's say we have our sky here. Okay. And also the sky is reflecting the water. So let's just do that. It's reflecting the water and such. So that's our sky color. And now we can also paint a little bit of the brighter color, of the reflection. So, which means those fall looking trees, with the warm color leaves and such. We'll do that wet onto wet. Again, first wash is always the color of the light. So that's what we're going to do right now. So don't worry about the shape and such is really not that important at this stage. We're just painting the color of the light right now. So don't worry about what about a reflection and all that. It's really not that important just yet. So here we go. We got those color in. Again, very loose. It's not really important now. For this demo, I'm not trying to make it very precise and everything. I'm just showing you different types of waters. Okay, so we got some warmer part of the tree. So I'll also do that for the water surface. So this is the first wash of that water. It doesn't look like anything just yet, but we'll just let it be. And let's paint another body of water here. And so we have the background. There's a bunch of trees and got some trees, some rocks, whatever. Okay, we're mainly going to focus on water, so there's some reflection. Now, this water has a little bit more distance and the ripples are smaller. So we're going to make it into a soft reflection. This one is going to be sharp reflection, but we're painting the color of the light first. So we just this is just the color of the light. We will paint in the ripple and stuff later on. But for this guy, we're going to paint a soft reflection. From the sky, we we'll just give it it's kind of like an overcast weather. So I'm just going to give it a sky, a very general wash. Okay, a little bit bluer here. Okay, and over here. Keep it light and transparent. Okay, so the same thing as this is our first wash. Okay. Now, I'm going to wait for it to dry a little bit too. But again, the first wash is always the color of the light. So if there's anything lighter than the things in the picture, there's things lighter than the trees and the reflection, that's the color that you want to paint first. So this is still drying. So I am going to come back after it is dry. Okay, so this is dry. I will start painting the second wash for this one. And I will work on this next. So for this, I'm going to start to paint a tree as well as the reflection. So that they can be connected. So I will mix some warm colors, warmer, darker. Again, this is going to be very loose. OK, 
Okay, I think this is this is good enough. Okay, now for the reflection, I will add a tiny little bit of blue. Okay, now look at that. I'm just going to start painting them. So start from the back a little bit cleaner. Don't start doing a lot of ripple in the distance. Okay, start to increase your ripple and the distance of it as it goes to the foreground here. Okay, so don't start doing the ripple right here. Start with like a cleaner shape and as it come to the foreground, you start to increase the size of the ripple and the distance because the perspective, right? We got, this is further away from us. So the ripples are closer together visually. And as it comes to the foreground, we start to see the ripple a little bit better. They start to separate a little bit more and so on. Just a little bit darker, it feels a little bit too weak. Okay, I need to do that rather quickly, otherwise if the paper is dry, then it's not going to look that good. Straight, horizontal, and straight. Okay, don't all of a sudden have curvy ripples unless it's really close to you. Okay, they're still following the perspective. They are on the water surface, and the water surface in general is flat. So you don't want to start to curve the shape of the ripples all over the place. Closer ripples and then start to have ripples that's a little bit further apart just to push the depths a little bit more. And before it is dry, we can do a little bit of wet on to wet here. So maybe reflecting what's going on up here. So there's a little bit of shadow in the tree so we can have that inside of this hard reflection. That's the general shape of it. Okay, now for this guy, then the overcast morning. So again, I'll start with the background. Okay, just very simple, distant trees and bushes and stuff. Okay, maybe a little bit of the green. So I'll add a little bit turquoise, a little bit of yellow, just to give it some colors but it, this is mostly monochromatic I want some soft reflection for for this okay it's a little bit further away while we can still see the ripple in the photo I feel in this if I will paint this into a painting I want to have a soft reflection just to make it look a little bit more atmospheric helps the mood a little bit so I'm going to pre-wet this so you can wet all all of it if you paper if your paper is completely dry I'm just gonna wet the part that I'm going to paint the reflection so mix some mixtures for the reflection, make it a little bit drier than you would expect it because this is already wet. So if you want to do one on too wet, don't mix a very watery paint. It should be drier than what you did here. So let's see, I'm just, while it is still wet, I'm just put in that paint in. And because my paper is a little bit tilted, it's going to flow down naturally. Now my paper is not as tilted as it used to, so I do need to give it a little bit more assistance coming down here. But as you can see, it is nice and soft. Okay, I can even do this if I want to. I can even just paint the shape down if I want to. Try to mirror was up here somewhat. Okay, it doesn't have to be that accurate, but somewhat close. Okay, now one thing that you can do is you can squeeze out the moisture on your brush so it's nice and damp. And you can go over it like that, just a little. 
that will disturb this perfectly soft reflection just to give it a little bit sense of water surface don't overdo it though you just need a few you just want a few to kind of give it a sense of yeah the water is still moving it is still a ripple a water surface instead of just looking like a mirror so this is a very simple two types of reflection we got sharp reflection with some color variation inside and this is a soft reflection when the water is a little bit further away and when the water is a little bit more steel okay now i'm going to paint ocean which is very very different again for this particular one we will do the sky and the water first so i'm going to save some time so i'm not going to paint that much of a sky so i will just give it a sort of a cobalt blue sky here okay and i'm just going to use a damp brush and soften this okay so i'm softening this so it is nice and soft it has a, like a gradation but i didn't wet it down here so i can paint the water surface right away okay if you paint if you paint this and you want to paint all the way down you need to wait for it to dry, then paint the waterline. Otherwise, it's not going to be sharp and flat. Okay, so water down here. Now we're painting the ocean. So there's not a lot of reflection you know, when it comes to the ocean you know, because the color and the depths of the water usually don't have that much reflection there are some oceans that do have reflection especially when you're looking at things a little bit closer but this is so far away we don't actually see that and if you look into the photo if you zoom all the way in you do see thousands of ripples but we're not going to paint all that it's just not possible so what we're going to do is to emphasize what's there in the ocean so we got of course the blue water the oceans have a lot of foams so i'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing when it reaches the shore okay. so so that's why you use you want to use cold press paper to or even rough paper if you like but most of the time I use cold press paper. Unless if you're using Saunders Waterford, then their papers are softer, you can use you can use rough. Okay, so some dry brushing here. Very lightly go over it like that. Okay, and with a certain speed. You don't want to build very slowly, just with some dry brushing. We've got a little bit of foam texture here. Just a little bit of turquoise here. Couple turquoise, couple earthstone colors. Okay, so got some dark rocks. Okay. Okay, a little bit warmer here. Now it is a small painting, but I will still try to try to do this. So the foam has volume, so it does cast tiny little bit of shadow onto the sand. And also the foam, because the foam has thickness, if you give it just a little hint of dark and the shadow on the side, it'll feel like there's some thickness here. So that's just a tiny little bit of visual language treatment here that you can do. So all of a sudden you feel like, yeah, the foam is on top of the sand. Now I'm going to add a little bit more, more blue here. And some of it got leave out a little bit too much, too much blue, uh, too much white. Okay. Some more water here. Okay. And the ocean, there's waves and stuff, but because of this is kind of far, so we don't have a lot of details on the ocean wave, but still you can add some 
again, same thing as the foam here. Add a little bit of dark underneath some of the foam. It's too much white here. I'm just going to fill that in. There you have it. It's a very simple ocean doodle. I won't even call it a sketch. It's a very simple one. Okay, but now we have three different type of water. We have the sharp reflection ripples that's a little bit closer to us. And then we have like a distant, more calm lake, river, whatever. They have soft reflections. And then we have ocean, which is another thing as it only has foam and stuff in it. Okay, so let's talk about this painting. So this photo was taken a couple weeks ago when I was visiting Benbridge Island with my family. That was a little getaway and we haven't seen beaches for such a long time. It was great to smell the seawater. Anyways, I saw the scenery with a very distinct ripples and the transparent shallow water also really attracts me. So I decided to paint this painting. The boat though I added in was Photoshop because I feel if I just paint the ocean, the reflection and the foreground, it'll be a little bit empty and hard to find a focus. So I added in with Photoshop. Now after the drawing, I pre-wet the paper and I start my first wash with the sky. The sky is mostly clear, but I do want to hint just a little bit of cloud, even though it's not really in the photo. I just thought to have a little bit of variation in the sky, just to make it a little bit more interesting. But it's still a lot more important to keep the first wash clean though. So I start to also mix some green colors and that will be the distant trees and stuff. Again, the first wash is always the color of the light. So it's okay if the colors starting to blend into each other wet onto wet, that's actually great. And another thing to remember is that the first wash is usually going to fade back quite a bit. So it's going to dry lighter. So don't be afraid to put a little bit more color into it. Now I do need to leave out a little bit of highlight for the first wash for this painting because the boat itself is white and also the reflection of the boat is also white. So that becomes pretty important. I need to pay attention not to paint into those. Otherwise, when you paint out the white, you're not able to get those back. So I'm starting to paint the water. Aside from the white of the boat and the white reflection, we don't really need to worry about anything else. So keep in mind that the first wash should be really clean. So don't slow down too much. Just leave out some white. You can always adjust the shape of that highlight later because the ripple is actually darker. So now I'm starting to paint some soft ripples wet onto wet. Have a little bit drier mixture and do some quick stroke. While it is still wet, it will become some soft ripples. This is a little bit tricky because you really need to do it at the right time. If you do it too early, it's going to fade into nothing because it's still really wet. If you do it too late, it will start to result in cauliflower edges. So that takes a little bit of practice. I also paint some color of the reflection of the house. And again, we can adjust the shape of those later because the reflection of those trees, the ripples, those are going to be a lot darker. So now I'm doing some wet onto wet work in the foreground. There is thousands of stone there and I'm not going to paint every single one of them. So I need to use visual language to suggest there are a lot of stones and small rocks. So using some textures by splattering some waters and some wet onto wet work. Now on to the second wash. 
and now the sky part is dry I can paint in the distant land keep them nice and light so that it will push back so I will connect that to the tree in the middle ground the tree in the middle ground is going to be a lot darker so I'm mixing a thicker mixtures and also darker mixtures so take my time and start to paint those in there's a lot of trees so treat them as a single group pay a little bit more attention to the silhouette the edges of the tree give it some textures of the leaf and it will be fine as long as it looks like a group of trees vegetation you're fine and keep in mind this is the middle value right now a lot of the trees are actually the dark value so we can come back and do a dark value later but right now we just want to connect the shape and keep them all into the middle value for now now that I look at it I feel that I still paint with a little bit too many brush strokes perhaps next time I can make it even more simple by painting some bigger bolder brush strokes but for this one this will do and I start to paint the house in the middle of those trees which is great because the man-made structure within the middle of the nature is always a great contrast keep the green life and warm I recently just did a video about how to mix green colors so if you missed that one I strongly recommend you go check that one out there's some great information in that video so I'm starting to pre-mix some colors for the reflection of those trees now I don't want to go over it too many times so this one I need to make sure this is the right value and just go for it again carefully paint around the boat preserve that bright highlight make sure you have enough mixture because you are doing this in one go and if in the middle of the paint you run out of color you will have to mix it very very quickly so if you are not really familiar with color mixing then you should mix a large amount of water enough for you to do the entire wash otherwise if you mix too little your color is going to run out in the middle of the wash and that's not good so now as you can see I am starting to define the reflection of the boat a little bit better now that I can paint the dark value in and with just a couple brush stroke you start to see the reflection of the boat and the house and remember it follows perspective too so the ripples in the distance they are closer together in the far distance they're so close just you can just paint it into a single shape but in the middle ground they start to separate just a little bit but still very close and as it extend down to the foreground the ripples are going to be a lot bigger and the space between them are larger as well so don't just look at a photo and try to copy it one to one really think about why does certain things look a certain way and try to give your own interpretation of it so as you can see by having enough mixture I can finish the whole wash for the reflection rather easily and now while it is still a little bit wet I can actually add some more wet onto wet effect within the area of the reflection and that's how you get some subtle changes of values and details inside of the reflections So now I give it a value transition for the boat. So from dark to light. Starting to give it the contact shadow between the boat and the water. Again, the water is a surface. So if you put something on top, it will occlude some light and there will be some shadows. Now I rewet the left foreground of the water because I want to do some wet onto wet and make the water a little bit darker just so that it can have a little bit more depth 
saying that water is darker is actually not exactly accurate. It's actually more transparent because it's more shallow, but the rock underneath it makes that water look dark. So the waters in the background, they are brighter, they absorb more light, so they appear to be bluer and lighter. Now, as I make the foreground water a little bit darker, I also start to hint some rock underneath. And I can only do that while it is still wet. So by adding some soft shape there, it hints that there's something underneath the water. So that's why it is a little bit blurry. But your mind will take that and think of it as there's something underneath the water because in the context of the painting, you know you're looking at the water. So all you need to do right now is try to interpret it into a simple and readable visual language. So now the water start to blend into the rocks on the shore. Again, there's so many rocks and if I try to paint them all, it's just going to be impossible. So I am just painting some dry brush marks and starting to create a little bit of the contrast between light and the dark. Whenever you see light and dark contrast, you read it as a form. That's pretty much human nature. So playing with different size of light and dark contrast, I can suggest that there are a lot of stones and rock in there. And also adding texture, I'm splattering some paint and water on it as well. So now I'm just giving some dark shapes to hint those form, and especially the places next to the light. I want to create contrast by using those. And don't overdo it. It's very similar to my last lesson about painting a group of figure. You only need a few defined figures and other figures can just be random marks. So here is the same thing. You have a few, a little bit more defined rocks and the rest of them you can just put in some random marks and people are going to read them as rocks because of the context of the visual language. So the water is looking good. I am starting to put some other dark detail like the windows on the boat. And now it's time to finishing up the middle ground trees. They should be a lot darker. So I'm just mixing a darker color and go over it. I still leave out a little bit of the light, but keep it simple and don't push the contrast too much because you don't want it to compete with the boat and the foreground. Just a little bit of volume. So the painting is pretty much done. I'm just wrapping the image up and adding a little bit more detail. Give it some more detail for the house. The house is really small, so don't sweat it too much. There are actually quite a few things on that beach, on that shore, but you don't need to paint everything in. Remember, just the major shape is the most important thing, so if you paint a few more shape, or if you miss out a few little shapes, it's fine as long as the overall image, overall shape is reading well. Now I decided to push the tree even darker by just adding some dark shadows of the tree. It's more for just complete the value range. So we have light to middle value to dark value. I actually didn't do a value study for this painting because the value and the shape of this painting is actually pretty simple. And I'm not talking about the water and stuff, little details, but the overall shape is actually pretty simple. It's just the background tree, the reflection, and the sky, and that's pretty much it. All the details I'm putting in right now, they are just helping to define what you're looking at. So adding a little bit more small dark shapes that's going to suggest that there are stones and some loose rocks. 
And if you look at the photo and look at my painting, it's not exactly the same. And that is okay. The photo is always just a reference for me. And if I get the point across, that's good. So I come back in with some white gouache and start to fix and add a little bit of the highlight back. And there we have it. I hope you like this painting and I hope you enjoy this demo. Just because water is abstract doesn't mean we can't have a solid idea of how to paint it. You know me, I always try to analyze all the visual information to make it easier to interpret what we see into a believable painting. This channel has been growing quite a bit lately and it's all thanks to you. If you're new here and you want to see more videos, be sure to like and subscribe. If you got any questions, comment down below. You can also go to my website at cafewatercolor.com, sign up to get my fast track watercolor PDF guide and some bonus videos. I am Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.